Hi everyone, it's Agnes and welcome to the third group YouTube interview with some of the viewers and some guests as well. Today there are five lovely people that I've had lots to do with and I am very fond of and they've come to share some inspiration with you, share some tips. Today's topic is five top tips to lead a meaningful life. They're going to share their top five tips and I'm looking forward to hearing what you say because I haven't heard what's what from all of you separately. So I'm excited to hear what's going on. So we're going to start with Jason. Jason, do you want to share where you are and I'll leave, <laughs> yes. it, I'll leave it to you now. Over to yeah, you. So I'm, I'm Jason. I'm in London and um, I'm a mindset coach and a mentor. So um, I've got some top tips for you within a situation. So when you're in a situation, a difficult situation, and uh, somebody's addressing you and it's quite confrontational, there's a book called um, Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Victor E. Frankel. And uh, he talks about mindsets and how you can you know, control your emotions as opposed to your emotions controlling you. So I listened to this chap and he um, came out with logotherapy and logos being the Latin for, um, you know, meaning. So what's the meaning of your life? What's the purpose of your life? And you can apply that to, um, to a situation. So if someone's being confrontational and you think, right, okay, how can I respond? How can I keep in control? How can I control my emotions? Because I'm kind of under attack here. What's the best sort of logical response without just shouting and being emotional? Because we both know, you know, if both parties start shouting, nobody wins an argument. So from, um, from reading the book, I actually came out with an acronym, which is AIM, A-I-M. And so AIM and AIM for a target. The target being the purpose of what you really want to get across to the other person. So let's start with A, which is, you know, what's your, what's your attitude in a situation? Can you check yourself for the attitude that you have? Can you correct it from being emotional, more into being logical and thinking of a solution to how you're being confronted? Then secondly, the I, what intent do you have in that position as well? What's your intent? Are you coming with good intent? Because if you're coming with good intent, generally, you know, the other person can pick up on that good intent that you've got. And if you've got a good reputation with good intent, then they can at least work that out and think, okay, well, we're in a different, you have a difference of opinions here, but I know this is a good person. I know they're coming from a good place. So maybe there is something to work on. And there's M for meaning. What's the meaning of this discussion? What's the meaning of if it's an argument or if you're being defensive or you're being attacked? What's, what's the meaning? Really, what do you want to get from it? You know, if it's a person that you're, you love, you're interested in, or you want to work with, or whatever the case is, what is the ultimate meaning to the disagreement or, you know, discussion that you're having? And ultimately, we then come to target. What's the target? What's the ultimate goal? What's the purpose? So if you're in a discussion and somebody really is, you know, coming with a different point or a different um, opinion, what's your attitude? Check your attitude. Check your intent, if you've got good intent. And what's the meaning? And what's the sole purpose? What's, what's the target? What's the best outcome you can get from that? And that all originates from another skill, which is stimulus, pause, response. The stimulus is you might be in a heated discussion or an argument with your partner or whatever the case is. Then you have time to pause. So process the information, take time before you are, which is respond. So because ultimately it's that response, it's the next words that's going to come out of your mouth, which is going to make the situa situation better or worse, which can be life-changing. So if you can process all these things and take time in your response and think of your attitude, your intent, 
and the meaning and the ultimate outcome you want from that discussion, then you'll probably better, you'll find yourself with a better solution to the argument, the discussion, the debate or conversation that you're having. So when now I'm addressed and people can be confrontational, I really do process all of that before the next sentence comes out of my mouth because there will be consequences to your actions which you need to be accountable for. And that breaking it down, there's five in there for you. (laughs) Beautiful. (laughs) Jason, we'll actually put those five because if people share different things during the interview, we'll put the sections down in the description for all of you because this is going to be really good information for people and they can pick the bits out that they relate to. So yes, brilliant. Nice. First out of the gate. (laughs) Woohoo! Thank you. Lovely. Like to be first out the gate. Yeah, that's great. No, that's really great. Did, were you? Was that the end of, of you finished your? Bit? Yeah. If there's if there's any questions from anybody, I'll be happy to you know. Yeah. Give some further information if anybody's got some questions on on what I've just said. Then fine. I can answer some. Cool. I'm sure there'll be some questions in the thread. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Who is feeling like they want to hop in next? Oh, Annie, you're talking. I've muted everybody. There you go. I've muted so, everybody so it's um, no. quiet while you're talking. <laughs> well, I was going to give kind of a, a different perspective on my five tips. That was wonderful, Jason, by the way. Uh, mine were, I was just a few years ago, not in a really great place. And I decided to, first of all, start feeling good about um, myself as far as I started working out. Um, I started eating really healthy and I felt like that really affected my moods and started making me, uh, I felt like it was helping me with stress. Um, I think there's a lot of good benefits that come from that. And it's interesting because as I got more into the law of attraction work, it's interesting how so many coaches do bring up the importance of healthy eating and working out to keep your vibe up. And it was interesting because I, I did notice a difference when I started doing that. And that was calling it part of my process of trying to get to a better place. Cause I was really not in a great place a few years ago. And so I started, I think eating healthy is also a form of respect to yourself mm. and also working out in fitness, whatever that is for you. I mean, I like to lift weights. I do some yoga. Um, and I really notice how it affects my vibe every day. And then also there's a great support system a lot of times at uh, those places, uh, the gyms. And when I was kind of going through a bad time, I felt like I had a really great kind of support system at the gym. And then as much as I tried to get around the (laughs) self-love, I felt like I sometimes was doing other things because I think there was issues that I was maybe afraid to deal with that came up for me in the self-love. Uh, some self-worth issues and things like that. And I felt like I kind of went, was going around it a lot of times. And then I've realized you really cannot go around it. Mm. And so the self-love, the meditations, I think have been, have been life-changing for me. I love your meditations. Um, I do them pretty much every day. And I have noticed a huge difference. People say I'm so much calmer. I think I was running on this kind of uh, nervous, kind of uh, uh, just kind of like, I, I mean, it's like my energy was just mm, like an adrenaline. Like, exactly. Mm. So I felt like the meditations have been huge for me. And, uh, and it's also made me kind of just think during those meditations and, you know, look at some of these issues. Um, and, and I do them all, I do all the different types of meditations. I do about money, do about love, do about, um, I'm making some changes in my business now. So I do some of those. And I, I think it's like endless. This morning at the gym, I was putting on uh, some, you know, I was putting on a rampage by, S, you know, Abraham. Mm. And I was just doing some intentions as I was working out. The other thing is I think finding work that you love and whatever yeah. that is, I feel like it's very powerful to find something that you feel like you can do that also can make a difference in others' lives. 
I happen to media train athletes who want to be broadcasters and I media train sportscasters. And I have found for me nothing more gratifying than watching people get to pursue their dreams and find work that they love and getting to share the gifts that they have mm. with people from broadcasting. So I find, um, and I also have done charity work. I find charity work very gratifying. I try to use my gifts to help others with like, whether it's kids, um, whatever. Um, a lot of times it's funny because opportunities will kind of come my way or show up. And I really try to do that because there's nothing better than feeling like you're giving back and helping others. Mm. And every day I have this little thing and, where I try to help someone, whatever that is. It could be something small, something big. And I think that's a really important aspect of too, of feeling good about your life. And then the other thing is, uh, which I, um, I think is maybe I'm up to the sixth thing, but I think trying to spend time and I get very busy and I'm a little bit of a workaholic, but I feel like I try to take time to see friends and family yeah. because it's almost like it recharges you. And I think that's a really important part too of a great life. Mm. And then also trying to be a support to them and help them with things that they're going through and pursuing. And uh, I, I will say I'm incredibly grateful to circling back to this work because I used to do a lot of this work many years ago to create an amazing life. And then I got away from it. And I now am so happy to be back. And I'm so glad I met you. You made such a difference when I was getting coached by you and really kind of got me on my way. So it's a real gift. Mm. And I will say these things I'm doing, I will never, ever, hopefully, <laughs> I think I've learned my lesson. I will not get away from those things because I know how much they add to my life. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, nice one. Nice one, Annie. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. That's brilliant. That's um, so great when you feel that change in yourself and other people reflect it back to you and you see things flourish. It's, you just realize you've got your ladder up the right wall for a change. And um, we are here to lead wonderful lives and to be happy and to be able to extend that out to other people. So when we get our own self right, then we really can be of immense use to those around us. So. And I think it's also like you never, I always feel like um, you don't really ever get to this point where you're like, okay, I'm done. No. You're always kind of, a, you're always kind of like growing, hopefully. Mm. And I feel like there's always new challenges. Mm. Yeah. So it's even like now, like I, I love what I do, but I'd like to make some changes. Mm. You know, how do I incorporate that? Or how do I, what are the other th goals I want to reach? Yeah. And then that puts things inside of you that challenge you. Yes. You know, and then you have to kind of like, okay, I got to, I have to work on this. Mm. It's always an ongoing, I always say you never get to that place where you're like, okay, I've done. <laughs> no, no, I, I can't even imagine what, I mean, Abraham Hicks talks about that a lot. You never get it done. You never get it done. And I think, well, it's like you can outdo your own, whatever limit you set, you can outdo your own self. It's like you're playing the game against yourself constantly. Yeah, you know what? One thing I, I'm really working on, I was writing in my journal about this actually this morning, was it's funny because I'm a pretty naturally, I think, a positive person. And I've definitely had my challenges in my life, but I think I've definitely been a pretty positive person. But I have realized I've been really monitoring my thoughts. And I'm kind of surprised to realize, like, wow, I do have some negative thoughts. I can see where I've kind of sabotaged myself to some degree on some things. Yeah. On just some bad self, you know, negative self-talk. Mm. And so I'm really, really, I've made it um, kind of a challenge to myself. And I wrote in my journal, like, I'm going to just see if I consistently, because it's a little bit of work. Yeah. Because you have to really change that right away in your, yeah. in your mind. And I thought if I really, really worked on that daily, how would my life look in a few months? Like how could I change a few areas? Yeah. So that's what I mean was so great about this work. You mm. could always have challenges for yourself. And yeah. Yeah. And there's like to be a better person. A work area, relationship area, health area, travel area, your money area, dream job. It's like there's all these different pieces of the puzzle. And, and kind of what Jason you know, was referring to a little bit too is that I think whenever something comes up, um, like something silly came up today, um, and I thought, wait a minute, I got to be responsible for how I reacted to that. And I need to, you know, change that 
revise that. Yeah. Because I could have maybe handled it a little better. So yeah. I think it's a constant looking more at ourselves as opposed to putting it onto someone else. Yeah. Boy, if I we could remember me. that, if we could remember that one thing every day and do it a bit better and a bit better, imagine, imagine what the world would be like if we all did that. Yeah. And I got to tell you what's really fun to do. I have nine year old twins and a 16 year old and the nine year old twins. We have so much fun. I mean, the 16 year old too, but we play little manifesting games every day just like with silly things, but I want them, I think they're a little too young, but I'm trying to get them to understand like, you know, kind of some of these concepts. Yeah. We do have fun things like with parking spots and yeah. You know, say, mom, wait, we've got to manifest a good parking spot or <laughs> yeah, it's fun, it's yeah. fun I want them to understand that they also have a, you know, a cre- you know, they're conscious creators. Yeah. It's a little hard maybe for them to quite understand, but for the, at least that now we play little games and it's Love like, fun every day. yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. If you grow up with that, that imagination creates reality and that you can, you know, all the things that we talk about around the law of attraction and all sorts of different theories, you practice that. Imagine what you'd be like when you hit sort of 20 years old, if you've had that grounding, be amazing. The head start you would have. Amazing. Oh yeah. I wish. Ah! I wish I <laughs> yep. Wonderful. Thank you, Annie. Oh, you're so welcome. That's Thank brilliant. You. Brilliant. Who would like to be number three? David. <laughs> there you go. I unmuted you. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? Great. So <laughs> I don't know if I have all five, but I definitely got some tips that have helped me. Okay. Uh, one thing that's helped me, I think that it's important to keep your eye on your goal despite what's happening. When you see what's happening in your life, you just have to acknowledge it as a reality, but you have to also acknowledge it as a part of the reality that you desire. That's how I feel. So one of Neville's greatest examples, he talks about how somebody wants a great job or they want more money, they should not be surprised if they get fired. You know, um, the Bible says that God's ways are higher than man's ways. So man may not understand the path from point A to B, but the Bible also says the steps of a righteous man are ordered. So if you can realize that whatever you're going through, your steps are being ordered to the destination that you uh, uh have given yourself then you'll be on the fast track to whatever it is that you desire but when we start to doubt and when we start to uh, not acknowledge whatever is happening as the will of God which I believe is in you then you start to stray away from what it is you desire you know whether it be I want to make more money so I get fired from my job or that specific person hasn't messaged you in about two months and you're thinking, oh, that person doesn't love me, you know, acknowledge that two month silence or that three or four month silence as in, hey, this person is madly in love with me. It sounds insane, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> do it. Try it. <laughs> That's good and seen. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you should not take your circumstances as an indication of of a lack, because if you if you're if you take it as an indication of lack, that's what you'll have. So I've just looked at every single circumstance as a part of what I want to be. You know, if you're bodybuilding, you know, a lot of people don't understand that bodybuilding. Uh, it's a lot more than just being muscular and huge and getting on stage. That's what people see. They see the finished product. They don't see that you started off at 100 pounds uh, or maybe 100 pounds overweight. They don't see that. They don't see the dieting. They don't see the hours in the gym. They don't see the hours of research. They don't see the cooking. They don't see any of that. And all of that, a lot of times, it sucks. It sucks. I don't want to go to the gym every day. I don't like cooking. 
and I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't like it. all of that stuff. It's torture, but it's a part of my greatest desire. Mm. So people see the nirvana that you're living when they see the end result when they see you on stage flexing and you got your oil on and you're glistening and people are like, wow, that guy's a great God. That guy's a Donald's. They see that, but they don't see the hell you went through to get there. So I go through that hell because it makes sense to me. I know what it takes to get from point A to point B. I know what's going on, right? But it is hell. All of that is a part of bodybuilding. So the hell you're going through now, I don't know if you guys have seen the karate kid. He didn't know that he was being trained the whole time. He just knew he was going through hell, right? But later he found out, wow, I'm, I'm on the road to becoming a karate master. So sometimes you just got to look up at the universe and say, hey, I mean, maybe – you know, you're Mr. miyagi me or something. I don't know. That's what I'm going to choose to believe. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I did. I just said, you know what, man? I don't know what's going on. This is so contrary to what I asked for. But it, you must know something that I don't. Hmm. And my other thing is you have to let things go. You even have to let go of letting go. Um. I had been, years ago, when I contacted Agnes, I had been crazy over this girl I was madly in love with, who I still love. And you guys know how that is when you can't stop thinking about the person all day, every day. And it got so bad that I couldn't work, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do I couldn't do nothing because I was just tormented with thoughts of her. And since the first day I've met her, there hasn't been one day that's gone by that I haven't thought about her, you know, and we've been back and forth, but one day I was at work and I thought, God dang it. I don't want to think about this person anymore. I love them, but this is too much. Like, like, what do I have to do to let go? And I just felt like, uh, I just spoke to myself. Neville talks about living in the end and you have to assume that it's, that you're already there. So I just said to myself, I've already let go. And my three dimensional reality will fall into place when it falls into place. So basically, David, don't worry about letting go. It'll happen. It'll happen when it happens. And then when I did that, five minutes later, she messaged me. I'm not lying to y'all. It's like every moment, that I just kind of let go of what it is I desire, it happens. Uh, and it happens immediately with little things. Oh, what's the name of that song? Two days later, it'll come on. You know, I really use some cheesecake. I got that cheesecake taste in my mouth. Bam, sister takes me out, takes me to this restaurant, best cheesecake I've ever had. But you have to let things go. Even the process of letting go, just know that it'll come to pass. Hey, I acknowledge that this will come to pass. It'll be all right. So, and when it comes to people that do you wrong, when it comes to people that steal from you uh, or, or backstab you, you got to let it go because holding on to that stuff isn't going to do anything for you. Worrying isn't going to do anything for you. Worrying has done nothing for no one. So when I have found out that I just have to look at it as a part of what I desire, I just realized that. Even if it wasn't, worrying isn't going to get you anywhere in this life. And sometimes we have to switch our focus to what we're grateful for. People consider me eccentric. And I go to work, some people laugh with me, some people laugh at me. Some people will tell the same old silly jokes and they'll pick at you and pick at you. I'm at work to make money. It doesn't bother me. When people pick on me or pick at me or make fun or laugh, I laugh with them. It's okay. Some people can't handle it. I was on the job with one guy. He had been tired of being made fun of. And I said, listen, they make fun of you because you give them a reaction. They make fun of you because the more they persist, the more of a reaction you give them, the more reason they have to make fun of you and make your life miserable. 
They make fun of me every day. But I notice when I just laugh or I keep it going or I don't acknowledge it, it's over in an instant. They leave it alone because they're not getting anything out of me. They're not getting any satisfaction from me. So if you don't acknowledge them, it'll go away. People stop making fun of me at work because I never acknowledged them. And I didn't realize that I was ministering to myself. You have to do that with whatever your situation is. If something is going bad in your life, man, don't acknowledge it. You know, David, I think the other thing is a big thing is revising. If you revise a lot of things that happen during uh, the day, I think that makes a yeah. huge difference too. I, I mean, I've been working on that on a more daily basis. Mm. And uh, it's a proper grammar, <laughs> more daily basis. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have noticed a change when I started doing that. That's something that I've recently been trying. Uh, it's definitely not one of my most powerful techniques because I haven't really put it a, uh, a lot into practice. So I, I just, um, but I, I definitely would like to. I, I need to read up a little bit more on what Neville talks about when it comes to revising. And, you know, all of this came, comes with practice. Even what I've uh, uh, gotten now, the knowledge that I've amassed and have been able to use pragmatically, just came through practice. Uh, for the people that don't know how to revise, I just advise you to chalk it up to it's helping you, not hurting you. Uh, don't acknowledge, uh, uh, don't be conscious of what is happening that you don't like. Be conscious of what you do like. I heard a metaphor that was really wonderful. They say the bad is what you focus on, what you're conscious of. And if we think of the conscious or the bad things that happen that you're conscious of as a blue elephant. If you stop trying to think about the blue elephant, the blue elephant gets bigger. So how do you get rid of the blue elephant? You think of a red elephant and you focus on the red elephant. The more you focus on the red elephant, uh, the more the blue elephant goes away. Before you know it, there's only a red elephant in the room. And that's how I have diminished all of the negative parts of my life. When something's going wrong, I just focus on what is working for me. I pray about what isn't. God, this is what I want. I'm going to focus on feeling gratitude for a proper outcome. I'm going to focus on feeling relaxed. Because for me, relaxation is the best way to kill fear. I just lay back in my shower, I turn the lights off, and I meditate, and I relax. And once I've meditated, once I've relaxed, once I thank God for a good outcome, I focus on everything that's good in my life instead of any of the negative things. Before I know it, the negative things are gone. It's like a cut that heals over time. It hurts at first, but a couple days later, the pain that was hurting your arm you look there, and there's no scar, and you forgot that you had that pain. You're like, when did I stop feeling this pain? It just kind of gradually goes away. So those are uh, two things that's been helping me. Not acknowledging the bad. And if you are to acknowledge the bad, acknowledge it as a good thing that's pushing you towards your ultimate goal. Those are the things that's, that's, that's helped me. Um, speaking things into existence, man, writing things down. Mm. Anytime I write something down, man, it just, uh, you got to write down what you desire. I remember I wanted to test God out and I said, God, I want to hear from a certain young lady. I dated two Alanas in my life. I want to hear from Alana. I didn't want anything that wasn't specific. It had to be specific because Sometimes we do this law of attraction, this Neville Goddard, this this uh, Neil Donald Walsh type mumbo jumbo, and you just think you're crazy. So I said, you know, maybe maybe this is like a collective delusion we're living in. So God, I need you to prove me wrong. I haven't heard from Alana in months. I wrote her name down. Alana will call me today. Wrote that in the morning. I kid you not. By the time I got home. And this is the funny thing. At work, I, th I thought to myself, there's one Alana with two ends, and there's one Alana with one end. I wanted the Alana with two ends to message me. And I thought to myself, what if God gets confused and the Alana with one end messages me? And I said, no, I want the one with two ends. 
So I get home. Alana with one end messaged me. It was too coincidental for it to not be God or the universe or, or your higher self, whatever you all like to call it. it. It answered me. And even though it wasn't the Alana with two ends, I'm convinced it would have been had I not taken a moment to entertain the idea of this higher self getting confused with the Alana with one end. But I know that's a mouthful. I hope you guys aren't getting confused. Um, a lot of message me. That's all I know. I asked for it that morning. I got it that same day. And God answered me to let me know if he's real. And I challenge you guys all, if you guys don't believe in the law of attraction or the universe or yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, your higher self, write down what it is you desire and wait for it to come. It will come. I don't think it's necessary to feel everything real. I think that that is a great practice, and that's what you should do. I think it's the most powerful way to make things come to pass. David, I think those little things that you're doing, I think it helps yeah. you build confidence when you do those little manifestations. Yes. I, I have a law of attraction um, uh, kind of a buddy in a group, yeah. and she and I kind of play a game where we do that pretty much every day. And it's really? pretty, yeah, it's pretty amazing because we'll just kind of write down every day and then we'll text each other throughout the day when like little funny things happen. And it's, oh, it's funny you say that. Yeah, and I it also is. have fun as I was mentioning about with my kids, like, you know, we'll just say silly things like we want to see a pink balloon <laughs> or just something silly. And it helps you feel, I think, more confident because you obviously, yeah. I'm sure like me have, you know, some other things that you're trying to manifest that are a little bit on a bigger on scale. At least it feels bigger on scale to us, even though they are probably just as easy, or they are just as easy as the other little things. But I do You're think right. little things help. I think that's a – shoot, that will be my third one right there. Test yourself. <laughs> uh, I think that's a, what she said is perfect. I wrote down a list of things that I wanted. I wanted an old friend to contact me, and I wanted a cup of coffee. So an old friend from Facebook did contact me. I didn't get the free cup of coffee, but hey. I'm not really a coffee drinker, so it doesn't bother me. But uh, You still might get it, though. <laughs> hey, I might get it. I'm, it's not going to hurt my feelings. You don't always if I get it that day. But, but the, <laughs> I might. That'd be something else, right? But I'd say the other thing, number four, is realizing that you have everything that you need. You have everything that you desire. Everything that you desire is in you. And there are times when I'm so exhausted of doing techniques. There's, there are times when I'm so emotionally just invested in too many different things that I don't have the energy. I don't have the mental fortitude to go on. And I think to myself, man, I should be revising as I lay down. Or I should be falling asleep in the right state. But there's sometimes when I lay down and I just said, you know what? Where I'm at right now is where I need to be to get where I need to get. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest because I've done the work and it's done. I don't want to do any techniques tonight. You know what I think, David, too, though, is I think getting um, sleep is really important because I have felt like the times I have not, my vibe is low the next day. And I start getting, um, I feel like, more negative thoughts. I feel like I start to question things and I've noticed yeah. I've had to make it a priority to really right. value that for, um, because I just know how it's going to affect my whole day. Mm. Yeah. And it's almost like it's not worth to not get the sleep because then I know other things are going to snowball and affect. It's me. like you said about eating right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, exercising, taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. All of this is self love. All of this is good for the body and all of this is good for your mind. I was reading a study on how clutter around the house can really put you in a negative state. Clean up your home. Be in a clean environment. But uh, I think uh, on yes, you and I talked about this, didn't we? On yes, we did. Because um, we were talking about how important. I always had it on my vision board to simplify. And as a, I grew up as a you know pretty poor kid in Ohio, so I always thought more was better. So I always like would. And I always had, you know, more and more stuff. And then I just realized I was, it didn't make me happy. 
Mm. I always liked being in places that were more sparse, that didn't have a lot of things around them. I felt like I could think better and I could write better. And so now, I'll tell you what, you spend a lot of time getting rid of all those things. <laughs> um, it takes a lot of time to simplify your life, oddly enough. Yeah, for sure. But I think it affects your vibe. Yeah, I agree. David, you really scared me then. I thought you were going to the bathroom and you were taking us with you. <laughs> I was just about to mute your video. <laughs> I just needed to blow my nose. Oh, thank <laughs> God for that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. No. There is always, pay extra for that. <laughs> there's always something random and weird on these calls. Oh, yeah. my God. Hilarious. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I, I was reading some literature on Neville, and one thing he talks about is he talks about the Sabbath day. I'm paraphrasing, so forgive me if I butcher it. But he talks about the Sabbath day, and the Sabbath day is made for rest. God creates the world in six days, and he rests on the seventh. Uh, we all know that creation takes place in the mind. After your creation is made, it's important to rest. And I realized that when I lay down, and I'm not revising, I realize when I lay down and I decide to relax and say, I'm where I'm supposed to be, versus utilizing every single technique in the book, then that's resting. And that's a statement in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And that will help you manifest. And believe me, I've tried every single technique. I'm a Christian man, but in my desperation to achieve everything that I wanted to achieve, I did witchcraft, I did voodoo, I did law of attraction, I went to soothsayers and, and, and people who could read tarot cards. I did it all, you know, and all of that stuff is great. All of that stuff has its own power, but it's just the same thing over and over again recycled. You know, we look at the Old Testament. The Old Testament, they have a lot of rituals. They make things come to pass. Then in the New Testament, we have Jesus, and Jesus explains the mechanisms of how things work. Uh, the mind uh, listens to trauma, symbolism, and repetition. And Jesus pretty much dispelled the mystery behind all of those things. And he said, all it is is faith. You just need faith. You just need belief. And there's no need to go to soothsayers. There's no need to get your cards or your future read. There's no need to travel to Africa to see a shaman or any of that. You know, if that helps you, more power to you. But if you can just think about what you desire in a positive way, feel it real, and relax, it will come to pass. If you can write it down and ask yourself, what does it feel like if what I want has come to pass, then it will come to pass. If you can acknowledge the bad as the good, or walking by faith and not by sight, then you'll be all right. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, I'm not saying don't go out there and try techniques because, hey, you know, learning is great. Trying new techniques might help you. I've heard some things on uh, uh, jumping realities with glasses of water that's really popular in the manifestation uh, 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 talk nowadays. But, you know, even no matter what you try, you have to realize that the linchpin of it all, the point of operation of it all, is your faith and your desire. And if you do not have the faith in what you want to believe, if you desire it enough, eventually you will come across the faith. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the faith to achieve what I wanted. I did not. But my desire was so strong that I kept chasing after it until the faith developed. But and I the think, faith. But I think, David. Delivered. You stop looking for that, like we've talked about many times, looking for, like you mentioned, all those different things. You stop looking for outside reassurance. Right. And that's what I was doing when I was trying to get all of these, when I was looking at all these techniques and all these forms of magic, I was looking for outside reassurance. Yeah. But you have to acknowledge yourself as God. You have to acknowledge yourself as this all-powerful being. You have to acknowledge the imagination. And when you acknowledge the imagination and its power, 
and you operate in that, what you desire will come to pass. But you have to stay calm no matter what's going on around you. Jesus is in the boat. His disciples are scared. There's a storm going on around them. And he says to them, you have little faith. It's a metaphor. They had the Son of God in their boat, and they were scared. They didn't have to be. You have the Son of God or Jesus or the universe or this higher self in you, in your vicinity, so this storm around you, a little bit of faith will make it go away like that. Those are the things that's helped me. Uh, this is Lovely. the kind of thing that I've been utilizing over these last two years since I've been working with them, yes. That's, Lovely. that's pretty much it. That's great. Thank you. And I, I love the cameo with the toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, David. Thank you for your words, words and sentences. Joe or Mira, which one of you would like to go next? Um, I'll step in now then. Okay, sure. Joe. Go in. for it. So um, just to kind of touch on pretty much all the points that were raised there, they were all really, really good points. Um, I think a lot of what Jason spoke about, um, about pretty much taking a step back and really, you know, being present and what's actually happening around about you and being able to realise that. I think it's really important. Um, being present, I think, is huge. Being really, you know, focused on the here and now and actually not, you know, having too much fear about it. So just really just enjoying life as is, because as I think David mentioned, you do have everything that you need. It's all within. So it's about, for me, it's about enjoying that and just enjoying every day as it comes. And anything that does come up that's challenging, it's about really being able to see, you know, what to learn from that, as opposed to how did that affect me? How did that make me feel upset? How, you know, how did I get really, you know, negative reaction from that? I find that you know if I if I can take a le if I can learn something from that I can take something away from it and if that's going to help me grow as a person take that into the next day I think that's you know really important. Um, what Annie's speaking about as well with meditating and exercising as well, really leading a healthy life is extremely important. Um, for me, on top of that, I find maintenance um, of that can be quite tricky. I know myself over the last month or so. There's been a lot of change of circumstances for me, um, and it has been difficult to maintain. I've, I've recently started a channel, as you know, and I've not done any videos in the last month or so, purely because of work circumstances, personal life circumstances. But again, these are all things that have actually weighed me down. So maintenance is really important. People, I think it's been mentioned as well, where people will say, oh, I've, I've reached what I need to get to, and that's it. And then you just, you know, you know, you just stagnate. I think it's important to continue to grow step by step and keep evolving, keep climbing that ladder because it, it's it's infinite as far as I'm concerned. It never stops because if you stop that hard work that you're doing, you're stopping working on yourself. And if you stop and working on yourself, you're just going to deteriorate. You're just going to fall back into that trap. The first where you were at the start, before you started all the techniques, before you worked on yourself, before you started the diet, um, and things like that. So for me, I think it's important maintenance of these techniques and maintenance of, you know, really living and enjoying your life is really important. I think it's probably the most important thing you can do. It's not getting there, which is the most fruitful, I, th I find. It's staying there. And you don't stay there by settling. I don't think you stay there by settling. I think... When you put when you put it as there, there's constantly changing because there's always going to be circumstances, there's things that's going to happen because life <laughs> it never just stands still. I don't find it ever stands still for me. In particular, this time last year, I was looking at moving uh, down to England for a work opportunity, and I realised that it wasn't for me. There was something still here in Scotland because I wasn't too happy in my job, but it's because I wasn't so happy with him. I changed that, I changed my outlook on my job, I realised my worth from my job. And recently my, my positions changed in work, and my responsibilities have changed in work, 
and I have much more freedom to do what I'm supposed to be doing in my work life. So all those things have changed because I've changed how I feel about myself and how I feel about the work I'm in. I'm grateful for what I do. I'm grateful for what I provide to the company I work for. I'm grateful for what I provide to the world in general. I've got that much gratitude in my life. I think gratitude's probably another big tip for people, to be really grateful for what you have and not focus on what you don't have. The more you focus on what you don't have, the less you're going to have in life, not just with regards to that topic. I think in general, the more you focus on what you don't have, the more you're not going to have in different aspects of your life. It's not just about the specific person. It's not just about the, the career. It's not just about the money. It's not just about the perfect house. All these things, as you said, they all, they all form part of your life, I think. Um, it was interesting because I was speaking to a friend, this, is, this goes back a while, and I was talking to him about this kind of thing, about law of attraction, and he'd been in a, a situation with his girlfriend and he wasn't really enjoying his work, but then he put a lot of focus on his, his work life, and then his relationship broke down, and then he had to put a lot of focus on his relationship, but then his work life broke down. So all these things, he kept. it was almost like a seesaw, so it was up and down on both, and I said, Picture it like, you know, watering, like you're watering two flowers. And so you're, you're watering one plant, just the one plant, and you're putting all your focus on that when the other one's dying. And then you start watering the other plant to give it life. And then the first one starts dying. Why can't this all be one plant? Why can't these be different branches of the one plant? Mm. And he went, oh, I never thought about it that way. I says... You need to give balance to all these different things. They don't make up, you know, one thing doesn't make up your whole life, but your whole life is all around you and what makes you happy. It's not just about the relationship. If, if, if you're not doing well in work, then your relationship's going to fail. You, need, you may need the money to make the relationship in the house and the career. Or you, may, you need all this, you know, it all encompasses one thing, and that one thing's your life. It's not just about making the one thing, the one specific topic to your life. And he says, I never thought about it that way. I says, well, all these things are branches of your plant. Your plant is your life, and you need that plant to grow. How does the plant grow? By giving it to yourself. You know, you, you are the plant. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you look after yourself. You treat yourself well. You treat yourself with love. You're grateful for life. All these different things, I think, make up such a strong life for yourself. And I think it's so important that we don't put the focus on the things out there to make the life better. They all form part of the life, but they don't make the life better. You're in control of your life. Um, one, one more thing I would probably add, um, what I think is people, when they try the techniques or they have focus on the specific person or a career, they think they can just stand still. And it's like, right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stand still. You don't, you don't stop living. I'd never stop living. I still live my life the way, I, the way I should have been doing for years. I still live my life as I should do. But people, they, they decide to stop living. They, they, don't, they, they put so much focus on the thing outside them. They put so much focus on that. And it's like, I can't enjoy my life because I need this. I need that. I need this, that, or the other. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop living. No, you need you need, still need you need to live you need to live for you and you need to enjoy your life because and you say it so many times. And yes, that that thing or that person isn't your oxygen tank. If they were your oxygen tank, you would need them to breathe. Mm. But you still breathe, you still live, you still need to live and you need to do things that that make you happy. You need to have happiness within to then find these things that you enjoy. I think it's so important you just you just don't stop living for yourself. Um, that's pretty much what I've got to say. I don't know if anyone agrees with me there or not, so I've got anything they want to say on that. But that's pretty much where I'm coming from in mm. regards to this. I think it's important to live and enjoy your own life and really appreciate appreciate sorry what you have. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I won't even attempt my Scottish accent today. Please don't. I won't. 
<laughs> I gotta practice. I gotta yeah, practice. Yeah, you've got to help me from a while, so that'll be why you've not help me for a long while. I'm gonna get back to the videos. The videos are coming back this week, definitely. Because yeah. I'm no longer. I'm, yeah. Again, I've lost the balance, so I'm getting back to the balance yeah. now, and that's it. The videos are starting back next this week, and there's yeah. some inspiration coming through as well. Good stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of um, spurts and pauses and spurts and pauses when you're making videos. I think that's... Um, yeah, definitely. It's an ebb and flow. Sometimes you have heaps of ideas and heaps of... And then it sometimes is nothing, so... Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. and that's all right. Yeah. All good. Thank you, Joe. Thank you you're for welcome. your Thank you. ideas. And Mira. So... Um, a lot of people said what I was going to say, so I'll say a couple things different. Um, when you taught me Ho'oponopono, it was life-changing, life-changing. I do it all the time. I've been to the Ho'oponopono seminars. I want to tell everyone I know about it. And mm. um, after I started really cleaning the subconscious and realizing that, you know, 90% plus of our working mind is just subconscious memories, um, miracles started happening you know, in, in my life. So I love Ho'oponopono. Um, another thing that really helped is just what I'm feeling down. I watch uh, your videos on everyone as you pushed out. Mm -hmm. So I realized the more I'm paying attention to the physical, the less I'm in the spiritual and things can only change and shift in the energetic. They cannot, they cannot change in a lasting way when you're just trying to change the physical. So one thing you told me is, um, if you don't like the reflection, don't go hit the mirror. Stop being upset at the reflection. Stop, you know, mm. you can't walk up to the mirror and hit it and expect it to change. You have to change. So whenever I get annoyed with a situation, I hear your voice saying, don't hate the mirror. <laughs> and I try not to do that. Um, the third thing would be just meditation. Um, I don't feel like myself if I lose meditation, if I stop doing it for a couple of days. And that's the easiest thing not to do is mm. to not meditate not sit down for 20 minutes and meditate. But when I do, everything shifts. I'm, I'm more clear, I'm more still, and then I can actually do what I think is real self-love, which is Ho'oponopono, because I think, how, how can we even know the self if we don't have moments of stillness and mm. if we are identifying with that sort of hurt inner child? So I love, love that. And, and I can tell that Annie, like, I can tell she's doing a lot of self-love because she's got this kind of inner glow that's just coming out. She's, she's glowing. So I can tell she, she really like, like you can just tell even when you interact with people who love themselves, who spends a lot of time, you know, really caring for the self. So that's something that I think never stops. You always, always have to keep doing that. Even when you have friends and family and obligations and you're traveling, mm. number one thing. And um, something you told me recently to do is giving. Um, there's situations I want to change. And, you know, you clearly said, don't, don't give to get, but you cannot expect abundance or anything in your life if you're not giving. Giving should be the first step. Um, so I love now that I'm paying attention to, am I in an abundant giving mood? Do I feel like giving? And like even when a homeless person is coming up to the car you know, there's more than enough to go around. Whatever change I have or food, um, give. Or if a friend wants to talk and you're tired at the end of the day, um, I'll still try to do as much as I can. So, Because when you start doing this work, it's interesting. People will tap you as a resource. So mm -hmm. friends need help that you haven't heard from in years suddenly realize they just feel a shift. They feel like you might have something to say that can help. So um, it's important to conserve your energy, but also give. Yeah, so those yeah are I would say, Mira, that I've always enjoyed helping people. And it was interesting when I went through um, a challenging time the last few years, it was so humbling how people came out of the woodwork to help me. And I would tell my friends, you know, I'd almost want to cry because I'd say I don't even feel like I'm most deserving of all. I mean, people were just left and right being so amazing to me and my family. And they said, Annie, but you don't realize you've always been doing that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of like the universe giving it back to you. Yeah. And I really felt like I was lifted by all these amazing 
I would almost be, I would almost feel like I was kind of, I was sent all these angels <laughs> that really kind of just lifted me during this time. And I do feel like, I mean, I always get chills thinking about it because I do feel like it's so important to try to give back, you know, daily because I feel like, um, that we're all, you know, we all go through things and to use the gifts that we were given or that we've learned to help others. You feel so good. Yes, exactly. Mm. Afterwards. Yeah. And I think what Mira's saying about inner child is huge because, um, I realized that I was, I had made decisions in my life based on some things from my inner child that were still affecting me. Oh yeah. And I really have had to work on, I mean, I'm still working on it to heal that. <clears throat> so it really shows up. Yeah. And, and once your inner child can tell you're cleaning, more things start coming up to clean. Like more memories come up and more. Because mm -hmm. I think your, your being is so happy that, oh, I'm going to feel lighter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be clearing all this. Thank you. And one thing I've, I've started to do recently is I wake up in the morning and I think, how do I want to feel? You know, how do I want to feel today? And then I just feel that and I start attracting different things that match that feeling. I want to feel light and happy. So I'll get an extra hour to work out or drink, you know, a liter of lemon water. And then I'm like, oh, wow, it's just that being in that feeling mode. Yeah. So I think your inner child feels it. I want to feel light and free. And it's like, okay, here you go. Let's start unloading all of this baggage. I think it's it's really interesting. There was a lecture by Dr. Hugh Lin who teaches Ho'oponopono, and he said, "Did you know that when you get up in the middle of the night and you walk to your kitchen, your you already your inner child already knows what you're going to eat based on what's comfortable." He's like, "You may think you have a choice, but it's actually already programmed." And I was thinking, "Oh my gosh, we've auto programmed ourselves into the past, just making decisions from the past." So I think if we want a new future, we have to de activate all that programming, all that subconscious programming. And that's the body. I think the body is just our subconscious expressing ourselves, you know? So yeah, that's. Wonderful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So good to hear just where you're all at and what's working and just sharing with other people because a lot of people, as you know, are extremely stuck and suffering and depressed and have got all sorts of health issues, relationship issues, money issues, work issues. So just hearing all of you will be some little nuggets for people to take away. So I want to thank you all. The hour has gone so fast. I can't believe how quick it goes when we do these and um, I appreciate all of you and thank you for giving your time. So do you all want to unmute yourselves and say goodbye to everybody? You can do it all at once. doesn't matter how it sounds. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you Bye, for inviting me. Bye. Bye Thanks everybody. So Bye -bye. Uh, it's it was wonderful. A thank you. Everyone. It was an honor and it was a pleasure. Oh, yeah. thank beautiful. You. Beautiful. Thanks a lot. So all Thanks. of you stay on the line. I'm going to stop recording and we will say bye in private. Bye, everyone. See you in the next one. Bye, 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 bye.